Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the technical analysis on XRP and Solana, reviewing the price action of both of these cryptocurrencies after yesterday's volatility. As I get into today's video, if you do find it useful and informative, smash that like button, guys. I really do appreciate that. If you are new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all the notifications, and you will not miss another video update. Let's jump right down into XRP to start. So here we have XRP paired up with USDT. We're on the one day Binance chart. I kind of covered this off yesterday stay on my second channel, which is linked in the description below if you haven't already checked that out to cover a lot more technical analysis there. Here we can see we had have a really aggressive sell off, right? We come down to a low yesterday of 43.19 cents for XRP. Very, very aggressive. Now, if I take this down into a four hour time frame, you can really review this kind of move to the downside. And where we currently sit with this one is quite interesting. Okay, so we have our fifth wave move up here, uh, truncating as we kind of spoke about in yesterday's video update and um, but here we can see this really aggressive move to the downside i want to do some measurements here because i want to understand from this move to the downside are we complete are we expecting more to the downside or not and here we can see that we actually came down very aggressively okay coming down past the 1.236 and down lower than 1.382 on the fib scales this essentially tells us that we should be expecting an additional move to the downside and if we have topped out uh, which is possible well, maybe not, but it's possible that we have. And I'll talk about that in a second. If we are to see this next step of volatility using the swing high at 51.62 cents, how low does this thing go? Well, we would be looking between 40.7 and the slightly higher range just up here of 46.9. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and remove that off the chart for now. And I want to reflect on this most recent move here as well. I'll come down to the one hour for that. On this one hour time frame, you can see that we've had a significant move to the upside. Let's go ahead and just reflect on where that has currently been moving to. Here we have the ability to potentially test out that slightly higher range, right? We have found resistance at the moment on the 0.618 fib area okay trying to find support on the 50 ema 50 sma on the one hour time frame however if we reflect on this we have the ability to see a bit of a run to the upside between 54.6 and 56. Four, eight. Okay, so that there is basically going to coincide with our 200 uh, hourly EMA. Okay, so we can look at this as a potential run a little bit more to the upside here. Okay, before we get into those retracements. And of course, the higher this goes, essentially, the um, the actual less damage we're going to have on that daily time frame. If I come up to the daily time frame here, where we're talking about this idea that we are to test out this lower range, which obviously coincides right with our low wave two expectations between 40.75 and 50.24, um, this lower range here will be that area. Now, this can lift up if we do rally up into that slightly higher range where we find resistance in uh, around that kind of 54 to 56 cent. Um, but, you know, that is going to be major resistance because there we have our 200 day EMA, as you can kind of see here, along with our 50 day EMA. So there's a lot of resistance on the daily chart that makes it quite unlikely that we're going to have those rallies to the upside just yet. But we are looking for some more volatility, some better pricing ahead of what happens next. Now, obviously, when it comes to all of these technical indicators or price action analysis, whether you use EMAs, Elliott Wave Theory, smart money concepts, there are key areas of invalidation. And when I say invalidation, what I mean is when the patterns and the structures change from where they currently sit. Okay, so as I've drawn these at the moment, our invalidation, our change of character or change of structure happens at 38.23. Anything lower than 38.23 is going to be a big bearish shift on the current structure that I've drawn out on the daily time frame. Okay, so we want to be very mindful that if we continue to see slippage in the crypto market, which now a lot of people are speculating that Bitcoin goes down to, you know, lower than let's say um, 40, uh, $42,000 in that kind of range. Well, in which case we are likely to see XRP also bleed out quite aggressively. And that could potentially be, be testing and retesting those areas of 38.23. But as I was discussing yesterday, XRP is holding up remarkably well in comparison to Bitcoin. Okay, it's had a 34.24, uh, sorry, 34.42% correction since the 31st of July. Yes, but it's actually holding up much better over the last 24 to 48 hours than Bitcoin has. And of course, the wider crypto market, many altcoins bleeding out quite aggressively, which we'll talk about Solana in a minute. 
So on here, it's looking okay. From a smart money concepts point of view, we are, of course, in a positive bullish change of characterization on the daily time frame. That has not changed. We've had the minor change over the last kind of few days or so, but we haven't had any major changes. So we still remain in bullish structures here, still fighting the resistance on equilibrium though. So although it's positive, there are still some days ahead which are going to be turbulent and that is the opportunity that's the opportunity that i see within the market and within the charts okay so for xrp we're looking okay i'm not as i said before and like i said yesterday i'm not concerned over the price action of what i'm seeing here when it comes to xrp okay so it's interesting to see how everything's playing out and that's good to see that our Z wave pattern, which would be in here, which I didn't really kind of explain, but we have a Z wave pattern right here. OK, that W, X, Y, X, Z uh, would basically be where we would be looking for the ultimate value. OK, but if we do lose 38.23, then obviously that is going to be pulled into question as well. OK, let's go ahead and find Solana. Let's talk a little bit about what's going on with Solana's price action, because it has completely broken down. Right. So unlike XRP, you can see here that it hasn't stayed within its parameters of the um, of the structure. And that's because Solana is following a different pattern. OK, so here we have a 335 correction pattern. It has the five wave move to the upside like XRP, but it had a different structure leading into it. And we were looking for rejection from up here. 190 to $198 was going to be our fifth wave high where we look for massive moves to the downside. Like I was saying in the previous Solana videos, we were hoping to stay above $127 as that is the typical area for that wave too. Okay, on the assumption that I was wrong with this particular structure. Now, of course, we have to bear in mind that, you know, we had $121 get lost and we also had $116 get lost. As I said in that previous video, if we lose $121, then we're likely to lose $116 and we had to complete a macro three wave correction coming down here like so. And that's exactly what's unfolding. Now, this move to the downside for Solana is also very aggressive. Is it finished? I don't think so. And this is, looks like an ex uh, one wave essentially, right? So what I'm looking for here is a bigger kind of bounce to the upside. I mean, it's done pretty well so far, but another move to the downside in a three wave fashion to finish off that Y wave structure. Okay. So unlike XRP, it hasn't held up very well. And that's because it has a very different structure leading into it. It's dropped down 43.29%. Okay. So it's looking okay. Like it is coming to the end of its structure, right? We've gone through the worst parts of it, although it might not feel that way, but it's kind of where you are sat with it. And in here, we can see that we are not yet at the range where we need to see. Okay, we're not, we've met minimum expectations for sure, but we haven't met the actual range where we need to be kind of looking for this to complete. Now, our current swing high on the 29th of July for Solana comes in 193.98. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take this fib and put it up onto the correct level and I'm going to put it right there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you where we should be heading, right? And that is going to be between 100 and 123.6. I'm going to draw another yellow box area because I love my yellow box areas on this search on this channel. Right, we're looking for 9305 to 10706. We can see that we came down quite nicely at the moment over the low of $110 exactly on this Binance chart, but we're not yet there, in my opinion. Now, where does the invalidation hit? Well, we have to go up higher than $193.98 in order to break out of this idea to make our current $110 low stick as our completed structure, we have to rally up higher than $193.98. Okay. Um, so I don't think that's likely to happen. I think we're likely to see further downside. And I don't think Bitcoin's finished its correction. And I don't think Solana's finished its correction either. Okay. So we are looking for better value between $93 and $107. Seems like a pretty reasonable place to be kind of targeting. Now, I do want to zoom out of this though, because I know some of this might seem really like, oh my God, you're just a bearish person. You've been bearish on this channel forever, right? Not true. We talk about the data that's in the charts as we see it. And this is an incredibly bullish place for Solana to be. Take a look at it, right? We can see it right here on the charts. We can see that this is just a correction on a much bigger 
play. Very similar to kind of what you could argue we saw way back over here where they had the initial surge to the upside, okay, from December 2022 up to February of 2023. We then had this big correction right here, okay, when we saw another surge to the upside. Even this little surge to the upside that we saw from June 2023 up to July of 2023 still had this big correction here before we got into that next big run to the upside, okay? Is this any different? No, it is not, but it has taken a long time to kind of play out here and it kind of gets people really nervous when things aren't as quick as they expect them to. But this whole pattern up here is actually very corrective. And I went through this with Bitcoin. I'll go through it on uh, Solana here as well, just so you kind of be aware. All we've seen is liquidity being extracted from the market. We had the lows, okay? So basically liquidate the longs, okay? Extract liquidity from the market, order blocks and all that kind of stuff. We then saw this move to the upside, liquidating the shorts, okay, hitting order blocks, liquidating and grabbing as much liquidity out of the market as possible. You then saw more longs getting wiped out as we had that move to the downside. That was followed by wiping out more shorts, okay, and then bam, we come down here and we wipe out all the longs again. Liquidity is being extracted from the market, okay, and of course, you know, depending on your perspective here, we have to kind of get as many kind of positions trapped in, in into the market as possible. You saw with our W wave down here from the lows of April uh, and May, these uh, were basically setting higher lows. Over here as well, we had higher lows getting set in, okay, as we saw these. And then, of course, the A wave high here, as you can see, this was a higher, uh, well, we actually had this swing high, collapsed down, lower, uh, higher low, and then another run to the upside, which was a confirmed higher high, only to get this huge rejection and set a lower low. Okay, so basically the market's just been bouncing around between two key points, right? We have the low range and the high range, and basically it's just been bouncing between the two. This is really obvious when you zoom out as well, and you can see that actually we haven't had any major corrections. This might feel like a major correction. It certainly does to, to many uh, retail investors who weren't necessarily expecting it, but you can see here that we are yeah, actually quite well within our range of expectations. And we still have a little bit more to the downside before we even complete our expectations. So for Solana, yes, it's been a little bit unfortunate. We've seen a lot of money kind of being wiped out of the market. A lot of people who were not expecting uh, this kind of level of correction um, were kind of you know taken by a bit of surprise. It's not a surprise to me. It's not a surprise to anyone in the Cheeky Crypto Discord server, of which, guys, is linked in the description below. If you haven't already joined, go ahead and check it out. You can be very, very calm in the markets if you are informed. Um, but yeah, for everything that's going on with XRP holding up very, very well, Solana here, I would argue is holding up well. Uh, it might not feel like it, but it looks to me like it's just ranging and it's just kind of looking to complete its structure between $93 and $107. Um, but otherwise, I think everything is kind of just business as usual. This is a crypto space after all. It's volatility is part and part of it. And um, nothing here is shocking to me in the slightest. You can let me know what your thoughts are on all of this in the comments down below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? What's your kind of price targets for XRP and Solana? Let me know. And uh, if you have found it useful and informative, smash that like button. If you're new, subscribe, and I'll catch you all in the next one.